Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here with a video here today bringing us a Photoshop tutorial I'm gonna create your very own cool clean text effects Most likely gonna put gaming somewhere in the title This is a really cool fun effect where you can use for like very simple banners You can see my example on the screen here Um, you can just use it with like a nice dark background a nice like tone Blue or whatever whatever your coast can happens to be like a nice complementary color to it as like the nice other other half of the back plate It can look pretty sick and also like uh, manipulation banners just something really fun for like a cartoony kind of look as well It also really honestly I guess shines you guys use a different tech effects rather than like a sans serif like something fun and scripty in my example I have this one here, but uh, yeah, of course I'll uh, choose if I like on the video There's a secret down below which wants to be the PSD that you guys see here today um, Or I'm probably gonna make myself a tech effect for you guys that looks something like this by using uh, smart objects A very very simple way to do it and uh, yeah, that's it. Let's just get this thing going All right guys, so with this thing going I'm gonna be using a nice cool font. It's gonna be called Delanda Sure, I guess calligraphy. I don't know if this is a free font, but if it is, I'll put it in the description down below for you guys to use if I don't remind me. Um, but I think just this style kind of looks best in a fun, like, text, uh, excuse me, like a scripty kind of font, or maybe just something more different than you usually use in like a regular sans serif font, like your Gotham's and all that stuff. So I'm gonna be going and using this, and I wrote the word text. Now, I do have a color scheme up here in the top right for me to go ahead and use. I'll run through these colors really quickly for you guys to go ahead and just kind of see. So we have this nice little yellow, which is our first color. This would be our highlight color. Another highlight color is this one right here. You can see the hex codes down right here, by the way, if you guys wanna copy them. A uh, nice little brownish kind of tone, which is gonna be our secondary for our, our back plate. And then we have our blues that are our secondary color in all to kind of give a nice little color scheme kind of going on, right? So if you guys wanna copy these hex codes, you guys definitely can. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing going. So. First things first, I'm going to take a duplicate, which is control J on your keyboard of the first text here. And just so you guys can see it for now, I will go ahead and make sure I change this color to that secondary color, which is neither of these. I think it's like this one, actually. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead, move this a little further down. Okay. Now I'm going to find a nice little angle where I would say it looks pretty, pretty good. I think right around here looks pretty good. So when I mean by finding an angle, I mean, if you look at this, I feel like this, this direction here. I mean, it doesn't actually look bad either, but some direction you guys use different fonts, it doesn't just doesn't look correct. Like, if I go up, that's not, that's, not, that's not it, okay? So, you know what I mean? Just kind of find a nice little direction where it kind of works for you. I would say right about here is pretty cool. Now, of course, you can guys see, uh, you can pretty much see these little, little areas, like uh, right here, where they're sort of like, it's not connecting. And a really, really easy fix, I would rather use either use a brush, you can use a pen tool, um, just to kind of make sure it, it looks as clean as possible in my opinion So if you guys want to do it the pencil way be my absolute guess I did it in my example personally But if you guys are just saying like if you were in a rush, I'm gonna show you guys this way really quick Let me just make my brush a little bit smaller click on this color make it a hard style brush on a new um, Layer and you just want to like do that. I mean that works as well It's not as clean as using a text or excuse me a, uh, a pen tool, but I would suggest you guys use a pen tool However, this does work, especially if you guys are using a nice 100% uh, hardness brush. And you can just make your own angles just like so. And uh, kind of make it really, really quick and simple for you guys, right? So, if you guys want to do this, be my guest. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly finish this for you guys, even though there's not that many. All right, so now when you guys are actually finished connecting your, uh, how do you say, your lighter and your darker shades, you can go ahead and click on the actual uh, layer which you did fixes on, and hold control, click on the bl uh, layer below it, which should be your brown layer here as well, or wherever your darker shade layer, right? Control J, uh, excuse me, Control G to make a group, Control J to make a duplicate, and then Control E to merge group, and those will give you a nice little duplicate, and you also have a nice little backup here as well, um, as is group one, we're just gonna call it backup. In case you mess up or whatever, or you just want to, uh, uh, another copy of it, right? So, now we have this nice little brown layer in one single layer. I can go ahead and now actually uh, focus on the bit of the front plate that's uh, our text right here, right? So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a new layer. And with this new layer, if you hold Alt on your keyboard and you kind of go in between the layers, this will get you the quick option to actually make a uh, clipping mask. Or you can just right-click on the new layer and the new clipping mask. This is either way works, right? I'm gonna hold, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna use B on my keyboard. I'm gonna give myself a nice little soft brush, so zero hardness, a pretty good size, and I'm gonna be using my secondary color, which is this one right here, for my highlights. So, it's literally just making a gradient, but uh, kind of a handmade one, of course. So, new layer, you click, you drag, you go over it, and you get yourself a nice layer. I did it a few times to make sure I get a nice, good uh, gradient for myself, and I'm gonna say, okay, this is pretty good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another new layer, right? Clip this, this uh, Clipping mask, this layer as well. Use my pen tool. 
right? I'm gonna make a little line going straight through. Now this little line is a bit of a decoration line, you can say, right? So you can either do a straight line like that, you can do like a cool zigzag if you want, or you can do like a cool like spiral or a uh, wavy kind of shape. It all depends on what you guys are going for, what works for you. I'm gonna just do a straight line because I'm pretty basic right now. And we're gonna go over, <laughs> right? Once you connect it, Make a new layer, make a selection, press OK, and you now have a selection, which is basically if you use a brush right now, you will only click and kind of, uh, I guess you would say guide your uh, brush only in this selection right now. So I'm going to use my brush again, take my lighter shade, and I'm going to give myself a nice lighter shade through right through the middle. And I'm going to say, OK, now we have basically three different tones, a nice little fun pattern going through the here in the middle as well. And then that's just kind of how that front plate kind of works. So I'm going to go back to the front plate in a little bit. But I want to kind of finish it off a little bit as well. Uh, as in the whole kind of 3D layer kind of shapes going on, right? So we're going to go back to our brown layer. This is our, uh, our this is our dark first plate, okay? So I'm going to take a, du a duplicate of this first plate, drag it right below. This is, I'm going to call it copy. I'll leave it to be copy so you guys know which copy it is, right? And then I'm going to take my movement tool, which is the first tool, drag it down. And I'm actually going to go ahead and press Control U really quickly and change the color really quick just so I can see it uh, a little bit easier, okay? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make sure I kind of guide where it should be so right around here is a pretty good spot for it to be as you can see if i moved it perfectly on a 90 degree angle it would be right here but if i move it over to the right a little bit you'll see it'll, it'll match up a little bit better and not really have the use or the need to uh put it like right here the need to do the whole how do you say the brush thing or the pen tool thing again um it's not too noticeable either but i would say if you want to be as perfect as possible and you have little areas like this that I need to get fixed. You can absolutely use a brush, but this also leaves it very open for you guys to make your own presets to it. So keep that in mind as well. But I'm just see my actual effect again right here, just to see where we're at kind of, right? So we kind of have this layer going on, right? This layer we did as well. And now this third layer that we're doing right now is gonna be that nice secondary color we're gonna be using as well. So uh, this one right here, this copy layer, we'll just go ahead and make this our first blue layer. I'm gonna go to co uh, color overlay, go to our first blue layer, which is right here, boom. Right, and now we got ourselves a nice little first blue layer. Right, so once again, you can probably make a guess. We're gonna be taking another copy of this one, so this is copy number two. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and just really quickly rash out this layer and lower the lightness so you can see a difference really quick. Right, drag it down again. And you can make this as large as you kind of want. I'll try to get a little bit further away so it's a nice, uh, bigger, th I guess a thicker kind of line. And I'm gonna say that's pretty good. Now what I'll do is I'll double click on this layer, go ahead and use color overlay. Go ahead and change the color to this nicer darker blue up here that I have as well. And now we have our nice little sort of like, how do you say, like that gum that you chew every now and again that has three layers. I forgot the name of it. I, ha I haven't chewed gum in freaking ages. Um, anyway, so now that you guys got this going on, you're pretty much all set to go ahead and actually finish off with your front plate. So for me, what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this text copy number four, which happens to be our, our basically our, our, our text text, right? That main plate text. I'm going to hold alt, click on it, drag it above everything. Right? So you're gonna have this nice little layer right here. Okay, so once you have that, I'm gonna lower my fill all the way down to zero. Okay, double click on it. We're gonna use a, how do you call it, linear, <laughs> excuse me, inner glow. Here we go, right? I'm gonna take this color here and choose one of these like shades of orange or whatever your color you're using right now, right? Press okay. Take your size, move it up a bit. I would say about six or so is pretty good. Make sure your blood mode is on linear dodge add. Then you can go ahead and press okay. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna right click on this, convert it into a smart object. Once you guys do this, it's basically like rash in the layer. So your layer style is now gone technically, but we did put our filled down to zero. So the only thing you are able to see, if I go back really quick, is just that little glow we just had. So when I actually rasterize it, or how do you say combine all the layers together, right? Rasterize type, it's sort of getting rid of, excuse me, not rasterize, uh, smart object. It's kind of getting rid of the glow that we had before. So you have to change our blend mode on our actual layer this time to linear dodge add to get the same effect, right? Then you can use the actual layer mask. You take your brush. If you use a brush with a layer mask, just like so, use a black brush to erase. You can go ahead and take a nice little soft brush eraser and kind of give yourself these nice fun highlights through your actual text, right? And look something like that. That looks pretty freaking clean. Cool, I'm excited for that. So I'll do the same thing again by taking a copy of this text, hold alt, drag it above everything, lower my fill down again, Double click on it, and this time I'm going to be using a stroke option. This stroke color is going to be the same color as the top layer up here. That way it gives myself a nice little simple subtle line right here. You can see if I turn it on and off, right? So you can guess, right click, convert to a uh, smart object, change this right here. The blend mode doesn't have to be changed because we didn't have to change anything here. We just wanted the same normal color, right? Take my brush, 
<laughs> erase this up here. I only want to keep it basically on the bottom so we have a nice little glue on the top and a nice little sort of like layer that kind of really holds its uh, its uh, shape down here, right? So I would say that looks pretty clean to me. So once I finish that, I can go ahead and do this one little last thing that I ended up doing, which was, this is kind of optional, but I just did another copy, lower my fill down. Um, it doesn't really matter about the fill actually, because we're doing is holding control on the actual thumbnail, pressing control, right? Holding it enough so you can click on the actual thumbnail that it gives you a marquee selection of it, right? Then go to select, modify, contract by three pixels, press okay. Now that's how you can go away basically. Now you want an actual new layer. You wanna press M on your keyboard, right? right here marquee tool it gives you the option when you go ahead and right click to use a uh, stroke and we're gonna be doing that putting it on about maybe like two pixels or two width and we're gonna change the color to something of the orange that's on the actual front plate press ok press ok again and right click deselect or control D and now if you guys want to do this personally you can put it on linear dodge add but it might not look great but I'm gonna put it on linear dodge add for now right uh, filter blur Gaussian blur and we're gonna blow this about two Okay, press OK. And now this is, like I said, it's very optional, but it's a nice little effect that it might give you, where if you kind of go around, click around a little bit, and it just gives a nice little another depth kind of uh, feel to it. But you can be the judge whether or not you like it or not. But for me, I think it just adds a little bit to it and just kind of looks pretty good. So once you're now done with all your little front plate layers, you can basically go ahead onto the finishing portions of it, which would be, I would suggest you guys to go ahead. And this is my, uh, this is my, how do you say, my hex code layer. So don't really worry about that. I'll make that red for you. I'm going to take my first top layer, you can also delete that copy that you made before, right? Take the top layer, hold shift, click on the bottom layer, which selects everything in between, right? You press control J, or excuse me, control G, G, right? And uh, to make a group and make a new layer, go ahead and clip mask this new layer. Take your brush. We're going to go ahead and select this like this darker color right here, right? And I'm just going to click, 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 almost like a nice little zigzag in circles, right? Take your blend mode from normal to linear dodge add. We're going to take our eraser here. Oops. Our eraser. And kind of go around a little bit and fix as we wish. Right? That looks pretty good. Now, the last thing I would suggest you guys to do is to group these things, uh, group these two layers together again by pressing Control G. Right? Then Control J to make a duplicate of it. And once you press Control J, you want to right click, convert into smart object. So you're going to have one entire smart object layer. That way, we're going to have to go into filter. Uh, camera filter raw and this will bring us into our nice little C color correction kind of area, right? So the first thing I would basically do is take my clarity and put this up a bit Take my vibrance throw this up a little bit You can take your highlights and kind of move it up a little bit your whites move it up a little bit your blacks Move it down a little bit But I guess the main reason why I'm here is because you can go into hue uh, saturation and luminance adjustments HSL adjustments go to your hue and you can change the yellows and the color of the actual yellow by using your hue bar right here you can take your blues, you can move it a little bit lighter if you want to. Then you can go in and say, I want my orange to be very bright, my yellows to be very bright, my blues to be just right there as well. Move this up as well if you want to. Right, and once you guys get to this little area here, you can pretty much say, I'm pretty much done. I can press OK. Then you got a pretty nice little simple, very vibrant now color uh, scheme going on here. And I would say last but not least would basically be kind of like the little area of a uh, little effect you guys see if you like, see right here on my example. Oops right like right around here and it's like this weird kind of almost plastic like effect you guys can guess now i guess i've been using it literally for some reason on everything um recently but filter filter gallery right and you want to go to plastic wrap and this is the effects that i have on this is 7 11 uh 10. now before you guys put that on i would actually recommend you make a duplicate of it of this layer before you actually make, put it on not on the same layer but on a different layer and uh, go to filter gallery now go to your plastic wrap 7 11 10 and press ok Right, and the reason why I'm going to put it on a different layer is you're going to put a layer mask on this one. Use a eraser, or excuse me, a brush and a black brush, and just go around and erase the parts where you definitely know it doesn't work. But for me, it makes it look a little bit more cartoonish, kind of cool. It's a little bit different from mostly everyone else's kind of stuff, right? And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Very simple, not too quick because my tutorials suck, and I always make them super long but hey it's done and it's pretty cool i hope you guys enjoy it it's just gonna make your banners look like, really really cool if you want like a nice cool 2d kind of look to it if you want to make a new layer rectangle marquee tool you click and make this a secondary color and now you got yourself a pretty dope 
Like that's that's disgusting color. Let's go with blue. This is why materials are so long. Let's just do that. There. See? Ta-da. Right? And then you can make a nice little cool 2D like uh, banner with it. Or if you want a solid black or a solid blue color in the background. Ah? Huh? Right? So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. I apologize if it's longer than usual, whatever. It's a text effect. I hope you guys do enjoy it. Tune in by likes on the video. You can see it down below, which must be a nice cool uh, how do you say a text effect? effect for you guys to use on your own so uh yeah thank you guys for very much for watching it says so hq out not like the key smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later much love and i'll see you later peace